Today, I'm gonna show you how to control your Samsung Smart TV using a Google Home or a Google Assistant without the need of a Chromecast device, so stick around. Again, welcome to the channel, and for those of you that are new, let me introduce myself. I am Aaron, and I am from Help Cloud, and on this channel, we focus on everything basically tech related from unboxings to reviews to tech tips, etc. So if that is something that interests you, consider subscribing. Now, for those of you that are familiar with this channel, you may have seen the video that I published a while back where I took my Samsung Smart TV and I took my Amazon device and I linked the two, allowing me to control the TV with the Amazon Alexa. Now, because I had a 2018 TV model, I had limited functionality. I was basically limited to turning it off and turning it back on, and that was practically it. It. It's going to be a very similar scenario with the Google Home stuff, but if you do have a 2019 or a newer TV that has the Amazon or the Google Assistant built in, you're going to have far more control than what I did. So without further ado, we're going to go through, walk through the step-by-step -step instructions how to get your Samsung Smart TV added to the SmartThings app and then linking the smart things over to the Google Home and then testing the Google Home functionality on the 2018 Samsung Smart TV. If you do have a 2018 or older, you're probably gonna have basic functionality like turn the volume up, maybe turn the channel, turn it on and off, maybe change the input, but that's pretty much it. If you do have a 2019 or a TV that does have like the Amazon or Google services or assistance built in, then of course you're gonna have a much better time with controlling that TV. So the first thing that we're gonna want to do is because this is a Samsung TV, we will want to add it to the SmartThings app. And I do have a Samsung phone, so the app is already installed. If you don't have the SmartThings app, you will need to go to the App Store or the Play Store and download and install the SmartThings app. Now, I don't know if it does work on iPhone or not. I haven't actually tested it, so you'll want to make sure and see if it's available on the App Store. So to get started, we're gonna go up to the Samsung and we'll go to the SmartThings app. That's gonna load my home that I've already pre-created, and if it detects that there's another Samsung device on the network, it's gonna pop up right here, and you can click on Setup there, or if that doesn't come up, you can just tap on the plus sign right here, and then you're gonna to wanna to tap on Device, scroll through the list, and tap on the device that you're trying to set up, so it's TV, Samsung, and then we're gonna tap on TV once more, and it's gonna say, get ready, set up, get started with your TV. We'll go ahead and click on Start, uh, location is going to be under my home. Yours may be different, but living room, I've got, you can go ahead and add a new room or you can just choose the one that I've already got in there, which is living room, which is where I want it because I do have the Google Home and the TV, of course, in the living room. So we're gonna go ahead and tap on next. Turn on your TV using the remote control. If you can't find your device below, you can click on the little get help right there, but it should take a second to detect it. One devices were found, select the device you want to add. This is the TV Challenger, so I'm gonna tap on that. Now you'll notice it says, check the pin shown on your TV, then enter it below. And if you look in the background here, you can see that it has given us a pin. And we're gonna take that pin number and we're gonna type it right here on the phone. So let's go ahead and switch back to the phone. Once you've got that in there, you can go ahead and click on done. TV is being registered to your Samsung account. You, when you first set up these Samsung smart things, you do have to sign in or create an account, which is what you're gonna to want to do because you will need to use that same account when we add the smart things app or the skill in over on the Google Home. So successfully connected, my home, living room connected, we're gonna tap on done. Of course, right there is where you can rename it if you would like to as well. You can see that it's in the smart things because living room, challenger, tap on that. You now can control your TV with this remote or with your phone because it's over the Wi-Fi network if you wanted to do that. However, the next steps are to go in and get the Google Home app. Now, if you don't have it already, you will want to go through the initial configuration. The one I have over there in the corner, which you can't see, it's off camera, has already been set up. It's gone through the initial setup. And if you want to know how to do that, you can click on this video in the top right hand corner that will walk you through the steps to set up the initial configuration of your Google Home or your Google Home Mini, Google Nest, all of those Google type products. So but in any case, we're gonna go ahead and tap on home. And what we're gonna want to do now though, is we're gonna go ahead and see if we can get it to search for the SmartThings app because a lot of these apps are starting to talk to each other. I have things from like the Wiz app, the Smart Life app, I've got things from SmartThings, and the apps are starting to communicate with each other so they can go through and make it more of a seamless integration, which is really cool. Unfortunately right now, it doesn't look like that I am getting a prompt to download it or to find it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna tap on the little plus up in the top left-hand corner, tap on Setup Device, 
And then we're gonna do have something already set up, link your smart home services like Philips Hue, Hue with the bridge. So we're gonna click on the one that says works with Google. We're gonna tap on that. Now from this list, we're looking for smart things. So we're gonna go up to the magnifying glass, type in smart things just like that. And you can see we've got the smart things skill right there. So we're gonna tap on smart things. This is again, like I said, it's gonna prompt you to sign in with the same user account that you created your smart things app with. So you'll want to make sure that they're logged into the exact same account. So I'm going to log into this off camera real quick. Once you get logged in, you're gonna see this authorized Google to access your works within the SmartThings devices. You will want to make sure that you go to select one and tap on my home one devices because you're basically giving Google authorization to access that specific home. Once you've got that in there, just tap on authorize. It's gonna say signing up, linking your SmartThings account, blah, 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 blah. And then once it does that, it's gonna take you back to the original page and you can see right here, now it's showing up as a TV. Now, when I was testing this a little bit earlier last night, I was getting a toggle switch icon, like an on off switch instead of the TV. And when it did that, it would not allow me to do more than turning the TV on and off. So if for any reason you're getting the toggle switch, just wait it out, eventually it will turn to the TV and then you can use it to change like the inputs and things like that. So. But in this case, it did detect that it was a TV right away, which is great. So we're gonna tap on that and we're gonna click on add to a room. Once again, you can choose whichever room that you want. We're just gonna tap on living room and hit next. Device was moved and we're gonna tap on done. Now you can see both devices are in the list. Now, if we wanted to go through this and test it out, we can. However, there is one important setting that you need to know in case you missed it during the initial setup of your Google Home. If we go into settings, and then we scroll down to more settings, you're gonna to want to tap on your data in the assistant activity and privacy controls. What this does is it fixes the, I wouldn't call it an error, but it fixes an issue where if you try to tell Google to do something, it'll say it can do it, but it needs to be, it needs additional information which can be set up in the home app. You'll want to come in here and you want to make sure that your web and app activity is on. You have to have this on in order for it to work correctly. So just tap on it and make sure that that toggle switch is on. Once you've got that, you may need to reboot the device or I even had to delink the account and relink the account in order for it to work correctly. But as soon as I did that, everything worked with flying colors. So let's back up here a few steps. All right, so we're on the home page. So right now we can actually go ahead and test the Google device and make sure that it's working. So if we go over here and we say, hey Google, turn off TV. Sure, turning challenger off it went ahead and turned it off. Now if we say, hey Google, turn on TV. Okay, turning challenger on. Turns it right back on, which is great. Hey Google, turn volume to 10 on TV. So it doesn't look like it wants to do the volume control. However, let's try swapping the input. Hey Google, turn TV to HDMI one. Okay, switching input to HDMI one on challenger. Took a second, but it eventually ended up swapping it over. Another thing to keep note is with the uh, Google Assistant is if you wanna be able to turn it on and off, you will need to have a wireless connection. If you are wired, it will not allow you to turn it back on because when it, the TV turns off, it shuts off the ethernet or the LAN device in the TV. But if you're wireless, there seems to be just a small amount of electricity that keeps the Wi-Fi connection stable and allows you to turn it back on. So just keep that in mind. If you're wanting to turn it back on and off, you will need to have a wireless connection. And that is all there is to it. As you can see, getting the TV to talk with the Google Home was actually a really simple process. Just add it to the smart things, link the smart things over to Google Home, and you're good to go. Again, I knew because I had a 2018 model TV that it was gonna give me some fits or it was gonna have some pretty limited functionality. So hopefully if you guys have a newer TV that you're able to do a lot more things like open the apps like Netflix or Hulu or whatever and get those things going as well as change the volume as well, which I was kind of surprised. I wasn't able to change the volume, but I was able to change the input. But in any case, again, very simple process. I hope that all worked for you guys. I hope you liked the video and enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to give the video a thumbs up and share the video, especially if you know somebody that is trying to hook up their TV over to Google Home. In any case, subscribe if you haven't already, and of course, enable that bell icon so you guys don't miss out on any type of future uploads, and we will see you on the next one. Peace.